Hey guys, welcome back to the big build. Now picture this, it's the late 1960s. Dr. Beecham has decided to close the main line past this station. Everything's gone. Half the station's closed. The only thing which remains beyond the station is a small branch line. That's what we're building today. Now the only thing I couldn't think of is what the station and the town will be called. So I asked you guys, and I want to say thank you to uh, Rocker 5438, JK Pianist. Hello there, Ryan the Steam Man, General Generic, Trainboy321, Anna Murphy 647, Matt Thorpe, Peter Windsor, and Lee Christopher for all coming up with great ideas what the town's going to be called. Now I have chosen. Evesham Town. And that's when we leave Christopher. Now, thank you very much for everyone. I'm going to be keeping hold of your names because I might use them elsewhere on the map. Now, let's carry on. I thought we'd start today by looking at the map. This is everything, what we've built so far. Our build today is at the very top right of the map. And to give you some reference, just below that is Milltown. And right at the bottom is the first city, the main city where everything uh, goes to. And uh, just as a final reference, if you drive from uh, Evesham, where our, our current build is, right down to the main city, it takes around 30 minutes. Now, let's start the build. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove some track. Now, this was the placeholder track which we put in to say where everything's gonna start off being. So it's a track type and basically all these platforms have got to go, they really are too long. So the invisible stations, this time we're using the uh, DMT stations. You can see I've uh, arranged some platforms here and I've just picked the wrong one. Nice big platform here. Now, as we're having a branch line at the end, the branch, branch line needs to go somewhere, and, uh, well, it's gonna go here. I don't know if we're actually ever gonna use the branch line now, because uh, the main line's actually closed. The, everything beyond this, the all the trains will divert down that what was the branch line anyway, so I don't know if we're gonna use it, but it's there, and I've set it up so we can actually, if we want to. Too much gap between there and the platform, though. So I'll do a little bit of uh, checking now. Do to make sure the uh, the gaps are correct. I move it in, thinking that'd be enough, and then it really isn't. Now these are going to be the working platforms because they. The idea is that this station was a lot bigger than it is now. And so we're gonna have three platform, well, two platforms and three lines actually working. As I say, that branch line, the end of the branch line there, we may use it, may not. It's there if we want to, but the, these three here, these three tracks here are gonna connect to the main line. And then they were passed down into what is the branch line. The one in the middle is pretty much for a backing service, so you can stop it there and then just reverse it again. So all the tracks and platforms we add onto this now are just for show. I'm going to make them look a bit older. So you see there's no actual invisible station here at all. Now I do wish that we could have uh, a way of weathering this platform. It did look, but there isn't, so we're going to have to so the way I look, make it look older later on is by putting grass and different types of things, you'll, you'll see. Now you'll also notice that the track I'm using is older. And I found another track type, which is just a track bed as well, so we'll be using that. So technically we could run, run trains if we wanted on the track bed if we really needed to get them somewhere, but we, we wouldn't ever do that. If you like this station, this is just uh, 
go to the download session, put Georgian in, and a few different assets for this come up, and you'll find it. Very lucky these steps through underneath. So we take that, that one out, because I want to make it a little bit older, and now we're this is the track bed I just mentioned. So there's no actual track on here at all. Now we can weather the around us a little bit more. And I've also got some uh, pieces of just track by themselves, and we just put them in places, and it just looks like uh, it's, it's been lifted already, the track. Now the difficulty here is we want to make it look like the track goes forward more. But the reality is we want it just to go left down where the, uh, the branch line is. And you can see on that branch line there, you, you can do the run around now. A little bit straighter, and then we need to add a, a junction in. Probably from here, yep, yeah. and we connect up to there. Straighten that up. And remember, we're going to be running quite large trains down here, so the junction can't be that tight. Platform where the, the branch line is, can, it, does, it can be a little bit tighter because we nothing large would have ran down there. This connection doesn't work, so we're going to have to take it back out again. No, take it out, do it again. I add it in, it does, does it once more. It does it once more. So we do it again, that's it, perfect. Now we just spread that out a bit more. Perfect. Right, so we have our pretend line going beyond that. Now it doesn't connect perfectly well, but once we've got the undergrowth and stuff, it'd be fine. So you can see the tracks uh, either old beyond this point, or it's just not there. Now what we do, we add a couple of tunnels in, and it's a nice way to end what is the main line there. And there we go, we've got a junction to go uh, th to the third track as well. The others don't really matter, they're just for show. And this side, we've now connected it to the main line. You'll notice some tracks to the left, or now to the right. They are leading to the freight station in Milltown. So we need to connect those up. Now originally at this point, I was thinking I was just going to run the freight straight through here, but we end up building another station for that. It doesn't become particularly detailed because we're not going to do anything with it right now, but it, we can. And that's the idea. We've added the spacing for it. It's there. And we also uh, will move the canal down here as well. Once again, don't know if we're going to run anything down it, but we can because it's there. Now what I'm doing now is uh, changing the uh, switches over, levers over to uh, invisible ones. So they don't come up every time uh, you're driving. That's it. Try and strand up a bit so it doesn't look so bad. Right, now a little hills. Now, I was asked how to do a hill the other day, so if you have a look at what I pressed then, uh, it's a, a set height of 12 at the moment. So we're, that's a reasonable height for the, for, for the hill. Then I'm using the gradient tool next to it. You'll notice the radius is quite high and the sensitivity is about 50% to do this. 
Now, if you want a straight edge, again, set it to zero or whatever height your main thing is and just do this, what I'm doing now. Now, these are the wonderful tunnels we're going to be using. Two of them because we've got four track. Now at this point, I don't know where the hill's going to go, but I, I'm pr I was pretty sure we're going to have it all day, all the way down the right here. So at the edge of the board, we need to cover that up. So what I've done here, I've got that up to the height of that uh, wall there. Then I found it. I've used the check height. Uh, we're going to get rid of this. I think that is the gloom. I'm not totally sure. It's meant to make everything darker, that thing, but uh, it doesn't. Get these tracks up. I think you can start to see that everything's shut beyond that point. But we're really going down to the left there. Make it all muddy, sort of uh, gives an idea of what we want to do with it. I'm not going to do a vast amount of painting right now, just help me with the process of what we're doing. Now we're going to change the height all the way along here. So, again, if you'll notice, I just use the up height there just to get to the, that point. And then use the tool to check what the actual height is, and then I'm using the 25 height there. Now you, you'll notice I'm using the gradient. Once again, sensitivity is about 70% there, I'd say. Now I do all the hills around here, between here and Milton. That takes me about five hours to do this. So you can see what I'm doing, just basically hiring it up, when, when you're making hills, do two sets, basically. One near the track and another away from the track. And do the higher one further, yeah, the, the further away from the track. You're trying to just hide things beyond that point, really. I don't think I expressed that very well there, but uh, I hope you understood what I'm trying to say. Nice kit, isn't it, for the cathedral? We're making hills and fields and things. There's, there's basically two, two sets of things you have to do. You have to physically make them using the height tool, and then you have to paint them. And both take time. If you rush them, they won't look good. Using the hilt, then we use the set height from there. there we go. Set height, then we can move over the top of the uh, the wall. It keeps the height then. So we're going to have a road there, so we're probably not going to want to put too much there. Because nothing's locked out, obviously, then. To and that's the wrong road as well. Don't use that one. Quickly search through. That's it. And of course we've got there, and it's not right. We've got the next one. That's it. Round we go. And then we go up in this sort of general direction of that uh, cathedral there. 
I put a few houses. I'm not entirely sure that I should have kept them, but they do stay. It was space filling, if I'm honest. Probably might have been better to put a couple walls. What I wanted was I didn't want just a, a terrace of houses and then suddenly nothing. Lines of trees, but we're going to put a lot of trees down. Most of them are very low poly, but uh, this is going to be very, very wooded around here. It's probably a surplus requirement in the end because I've got so many trees down, you probably won't see it. See them. And it starts the trees. Right, again, hills. Right, so we've chosen the height, which is now 12. We're using the height. You can see the button I'm pressed on the controls. And I do everywhere then. This is the bit which took about four hours. So you can, don't forget to go down as well. And here's the canal. We're moving this up all the way up. That was the end of Canal from, from uh, Milltown. And then we're getting, once again, about 56% on the gradient tool. The gradient tool works best when you've got the radius set as big as possible and the sensitivity around 50-60%. So you do your set heights first and then you use the gradient tool and you just keep playing with it. You're, you're brushing it and wherever you start off from, the land will try and get to that point. And if, the longer you hold it for, the, the, the nearer to that point it will get. So if you start the lowest part, point there, it, everything, below, everything around it you're, you're brushing at will lower. If you start the highest point, everything will, will, will raise. Now, you'll notice the track also. Make sure you set the height. Don't just choose the uh, manual, the automatic heights. Make sure you set a height for the track as well. Because otherwise, it will just go up and down with the hills. So make sure you do that before you play with this, uh, with the height tool for the uh, land height tool. And then what you can do with the track is click smooth and it'll lower the land down to that height if you've raised it, if you think it's above it. So it's minus 11 and I've gone all the way through here. I've checked the height of the original one and I've just I've done everything exactly the same. Once again, set height and then smooth it down again with the gradient tool. So I add a little bit of water in here and there. This is going to be a big lake, this one. This isn't on the main line again. Now I did this one way around. Don't do it this way around. I've not painted anything else. I just painted this because that makes it really difficult. Paint the track last. So I made my own life difficult then. In the distance there, that is Milltown. You can see some scenery popping in. If you do have a, a large mass uh, greenery area, sort of the area between towns, try and do something with it, otherwise it's boring. Also with the track, you'll notice it's not straight purposely because if you put the, the game doesn't render distances very well you don't want to be able to look too far ahead if you even look look from there by the sides you'll see white it renders everything as white so the less of that you can see the better so keep it curvy that's why I want all my tracks are basically curvy
Right, back to the canal. I said we'll probably put a, a canal lock in. Got two heights of water. I think that's actually at the moment it's the same height, but uh, she there's, there's no get tool for the height on the water, which you just have to play with it again. So once you change the height of the water, everything on that that water could change so the boats down in Milltown might, might now be submerged. Hopefully not. Now why that kink? Because if you notice the land, it's a certain way round. Everything's done in squares, so you can see I've tried to connect up properly. Now this doesn't work with the, the water going up to there because as the canal goes up and down that water will stay there so we have to lose the actual proper water here. There's no way to connect it in. I start putting the walls in I'm thinking that doesn't work does it? So while I'm doing this and in the back of my head I'm thinking what am I going to do to actually fix that water? that canal will actually go up and down so the boats can actually get to different levels. And at some point we'll make that work. Not now though. What we can probably do at some point is add a, a session in for between here and Milltown, so we have some sort of delivery service using the canal. Because why not? Now you'll see I've put this in, it's a sort of static water, but what allows me to do is have the water up to the gate there so it doesn't overflow. Got to make it make sure it's the right height for the water, the rest of the water here. I don't like it. It's static, but there's nothing I can do. There's no way to connect that up otherwise. Now this is the end of the canal, and that actually is going to be the train station, the other side of the platform. We don't really detail this area too much because I haven't quite decided what we're going to do with it yet. A lot of me, when you see me going to off, off on a tangent doing something else, it's because I've, I've come to a conclusion we need to get something else done in order to get what I want to do in the first place. So let's say I'm working on the station, the main train station, but then I go off and do something else. It's because I figured that I the heights from something else before I can start doing that. And that's why you you see me sometimes going off doing something completely different. It doesn't show well on a video sometimes, but uh, there are reasons behind it. Another invisible station, I, I a freight station. I do wish that, uh, just like the passenger ones, we could have a whole station where things appeared on the, the platform, but we don't, so... put two lines in here one so it's not particularly directional it's just that we can bypass that platform if we need to we could have um, freight parked in there for instance we have another train going by on the other line and then the train just picks up the freight from that platform maybe this connection here will change it doesn't it doesn't look realistic so I change that again I pretty much straight away actually that's that junction there is also too near to the uh, that branch line. Yes, this, that doesn't work. But I'd snip it there and then I'd put this in the little junction here. That looks better. And I'd do the same at the other end as well. And change the, uh, the switches over to the levers over to the invisible ones as well.
the height differences in land were quite quite dramatic here. It's actually going up and down, so trying to keep the gradient something which is you know plausible. It's very difficult, but in the end I managed it. I played with it for ages actually. You can see the hill. Now what I was saying earlier, if you press the smooth, that happens, you see, it goes over. If you've got the go in there, press smooth, and it gets it brings the trap back to the top again and it moves the hill down. Right, that is it for the first episode. Thank you very much for watching. One more to go. Um, see you next time. Cheers and bye-bye.